Thanks for tuning in to the Joss and Crowd podcast, where we chat about photography, business, life, and so much more. I'm your host, Jocelyn. Today we're here with M with M Christine Photos. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be have you here today. I met you seven seven years ago, six, six or seven, something like that. Six or seven years ago on a Facebook group, right? It was I needed an assistant. I remember it being. I was getting into my photography business and I didn't know how to really do it. And I was like, hey, I just want to be a fly on the wall. Who will let me do that during someone else's photo shoot so I can kind of figure that out? So you allowed me to be a fly and be an assistant and help you. That's awesome. And it's been so long since then. I was actually shooting out of my apartment at the time. That's incredible. So now you're a full-time photographer. Yeah, as of 2020. Crazy, That's exciting. How long have you been a full-time photographer now? Uh, coming up on two years. Gosh, this month it'll be two years. What made you get into photography and why is it something that you feel deeply and passionate about? Well, let's go into the way back machine. Why I got into photography. I have just always enjoyed taking photos and just really freezing time. The candidness and like the realness of photos is what really got me interested. Really just freezing time and just the candidness in real life with photos is what really got me so interested in it because you can look at a photo from any point in time and remember or recall or just re-engage with with that point in time. I think photos is one of the that was probably I feel like I've had a camera in my hand since I was like 12 to be completely honest. My my parents indulged me with it as well and I think every year for Christmas I got a new camera. Started off with my Kodak 35mm and just kind of evolved from there to different point and shoots to now working with my DSLR and just always having a camera on me. How long has it been since you've had actual business and how long did it take you to go from being a photographer to being a business to being a full-time photographer? It's been 20 years since I really started the photography journey, I would say. I mean, always having the camera in my hand and always making my friends be my models or taking pictures of, you know, outside spaces and things like that. But I signed my signed up for my LLC, my first LLC in 2014. So it's been about, gosh, it's been almost eight years since my first one. Gosh, it's so crazy. And then it's been at least two different names at this point. So. And why did you change names? Because Jocelyn told me to. <laughs> so because it was just complicated and not as, we're not going to say as niche down, but kind of. I don't necessarily think that we have to be super niche. Like we can only do one type of photography. That's just absurd because as us as creatives, there's no way to just do one thing. My brain, your brain, we don't know how to single focus on anything. Right. So when I first started, it was etc. photos and it was a play on my initials, which was ECT, which everybody confused as etc. even though that's ETC. But I was like, oh, cool, like, et cetera, et cetera photos. I can take pictures of everything. You you do have to niche down to a certain extent, but not all the way. It just, it wasn't, I don't even know entirely. It just, it wasn't what I wanted to focus on. And really having to explain what the heck et cetera photos was and why I chose it and all the things, it just, it didn't really tie to me anymore. And you suggested to really bring it home and bring it to, to me and like who I am and what I'm offering. And so I just brought it back to my name with M. Christine. Do you think when you <laughs> changed your name that that changed your business or how you marketed yourself or how people knew you? I do. I feel like it humanized my business more than just like etc. photos was just like yeah all the photos etc. miscellaneous whereas M. Christine really brings in who I am as a photographer in what I want my business to be and who I want to serve with that because I don't want to just shoot anybody and everybody and, and etc. I, I want people for me personally and where I'm at, I want people that want to celebrate. I want people that want to have a good time. I want people that enjoy color. I want people that are aligned with me and not just everyone on this God, you know, God forsaken earth. So I think it definitely did change the way that I market myself because it's easier to market yourself and something that you are authentic about and totally believe in. Whereas it was just so open-ended and you can't talk 
to everybody and you shouldn't talk to everybody. So now I'm talking to my people and people that actually want to hear me. So so how do you think that you're where your people are? Is that something that you find on Facebook or is it on Instagram or are you networking? <laughs> how is your main source to find your people? I mean, currently it's on the social media platforms. I've done a lot of things, but mostly it's definitely social media at this point. Right before COVID happened, I was like, I'm going to go do all the networking things. And then COVID happened. I know that it's something that's super important and I'm trying to get more involved in networking because I definitely think that in-person relationships are pulled to this type of profession, especially because it's an in-person service that we're providing. There's only so much that people can know and really learn about you online. Absolutely. Especially in the type of experience that us as photographers are trying to provide. I can talk about all the confetti and all the balloons and how happy and positive and energetic I am. But you can't always read all of that. It's better to have me in person where I can be as bubbly as I want. And yes, I definitely do a lot on the social media platforms, but I'm getting into more of the in-person networking aspects to really further grow my business because it is a person-to-person service that I'm providing. I think knowing you, I know that you had a lot of life changes happen during COVID and a lot of times people said COVID either hurt people or that made them better or a little bit of both in between. Did you, like looking back when your daughter's older, are you going to be like, oh my God, COVID was pure hell. How did it form you or change you in your business? I felt like I watched you grow a lot more and find your voice and find your colors. You're a very colorful business now. I feel like you're more vocal about your business than you were before. Is that something that changed during the COVID season or was there other things that were? I mean, it was definitely like COVID changed a lot. I turned 30 in 2020. The world shut down to 10 days before my 30th birthday and I was laid off four days before my 30th birthday. So it was just kind of like, okay, now what? I'm home, I'm home with my two and a half year old at the time, what do I do? There wasn't a whole lot you could do, nobody was in person. I wasn't taking pictures aside from what I was taking with my daughter. I spent a lot of time with my daughter and children can teach you so much, so much. And it really opened my eyes to a lot of what I was missing. Um, Crying is okay. (laughs) But yeah, it really showed me a lot of what I was missing because I was so busy with work. So it allowed me to slow down and really kind of see what was important. And what was important was experiences with my daughter. Absolutely. Photographing those experiences, the real life experiences that we were going through in such a weird, unprecedented time. Really deciding kind of what's important and where I wanted to go from there. I had been laid off from a company that I had been with for eight years, almost a full eight years, and since college. And I I had no idea what I was going to do. I just, I felt so trapped in the job that I was in, but also then trapped in what am I going to do now? So you went full time in 2020 with COVID. I did. I was laid off in March and then things started to open back up in May. So I I think I was laid off for a, I think it was like eight weeks, seven or eight weeks. And then we started going back slowly, all work from home. So I still had to do all the same things that I was doing because childcare wasn't a thing. So I'm doing all the things with my daughter. And I really got to a point where I was like, is this really what I want to do? Am I, am I, nobody's listening to me. Nobody's, you know, I had been at this job for so long and just been so beat down and beat down. And I was like, well, if nobody's listening to me, nobody's willing to change, then I'm just going to do my own thing. I'm done suffering. I'm done dealing with all of the stuff that isn't being hurt. And I'm going to go do my own thing. So in September, I made, or August technically, because I gave a month, I made that decision to to go full time, even though it was scary because I didn't want to suffer in in what I was doing. If I was going to have to be doing something to provide for my family, then it was going to be something that I enjoyed instead of something that was just keeping me busy and making me miserable. So you really didn't have time to plan anything. I know that you and I had done one-on-one mentoring and you had mentioned to me that when you were on maternity leave that you were going to get all your ducks in a row (laughs) And that's the goal, were, right? And that you were going to figure out how to go full time with your business. So it wasn't something that you just were like, oh, it's COVID, I'm going to go full time. It's something that you had thought about for a really long time. 
Do you think if COVID had never happened, do you think that you would have eventually gone full time? Or do you think that COVID kind of pushed you over that I can do this mentality? I think it definitely, it, it gave me the push because I saw what could happen when the rug was pulled out from under me. At least doing my, having my own business, running my own business, I can make my own hours, I can provide, I can figure out a way to do the things. Whereas in corporate world, you do what they say or you don't have a job. So yeah, it, it definitely, it put a different set of things into perspective for me that allowed me to really be okay with doing it by myself on my own. And it's given you more time with your daughter, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, she's been with me since she was born. She was born in 2017 and I started photography, my first LLC in 2014. So she's been alongside me for the whole entire ride. But it definitely, like right now she's in preschool in the middle of the freaking day. And it has allowed me the freedom to be able to take her to school, from school, and do all the things that she needs to do. And to have that time with her because we don't get that back. And I feel like that's a really core part of my photography as well is like it's real life moments that we don't always get back. We can have a photo to look back on, but we can't get that time back. So we might as well live it while we can. And your motto is, I know it's along the lines of celebration. What made you go into that? Yeah, it's celebrating real life moments for your life and for your business because we don't celebrate things enough in life or in business. No matter how big, no matter how small, we're not celebrating the little things enough. And a lot of times the little things are bigger than the big things. So it got to be really hard in 2020. There was so much going on, but there's also so much good. Did I lose my job? Did I have a terrible 30th birthday? Yeah. But I also got to spend so much time with my daughter that I wouldn't have otherwise. You're not supposed to make you cry today. (laughs) Put on makeup so you wouldn't. One of the things that you told me at the beginning of the year, which I think this is really cool. I think it doesn't just have to be with business. And I think that a lot of people should do this in their own life, business or personal. You and I sat down the end of December last year in my studio here and looked at this year and we put on our calendar things to look forward to Mm -hmm. and I know that you and I did a like a second Tuesday of every month where we could work together and plan for shoots and just fun different events and everything but one of the cool things you said was you wanted to take a month off with your daughter at Christmas Mm -hmm. what was that thought process and, and why did you choose that and what have you done so that you can do that because I think that's incredible and I think when people set business goals, they don't think of something like that. Like quality time, especially if it's a love language, that is something that's so huge and not something that you can necessarily go, oh, like it's November, I want to take next month off. You have to think about that and plan that. As a business, you have to plan that for your whole year so that you can do that. What made you want to do December particularly? That's a cold month to do. (laughs) Nothing is going on in December. There are very few, like schools get two weeks off at the end of December. It's the perfect time. And all the holidays and everything, like that's that's when you can get a good bit of your quality time. Uh Okay, I had to pause this recording because Em and I just had a laughing fit. Something (laughs) happened here and we laughed till we both cried. So we were talking about how you were going to take December off. So nothing really happens in December. The last two weeks are filled with celebrating and all types of things that are family or quality time. And especially here in Ohio, really ain't nothing to do. So I don't know, I think, I think a lot of it really just had to do with the holidays and a lot of people aren't getting photos in December. So I was like, perfect time, perfect time. It's cold, nobody's going outside for photos. Yes, we could do you know, brand photos inside or find a studio or what have you, but I don't know, it just didn't, it just seemed like the perfect month to kind of end the year with a reward of not having to do very much and just spending time with 
with Lil. And Lil is short for Lily. That's your Lily. Yes. That's your four year old daughter. She's almost five. <sighs> five in November. Do you think that, that is something that you're going to no obviously this is your first year wanting to do that in December. If all goes well and planned and you get to take that off, do you foresee yourself doing that every year? Or do you think that maybe next year it'll be June and you can go to beaches? Yeah, or... I mean that would probably be a smarter decision. <laughs> that's what I do. I like to go to the beach in the summer, but <laughs> I mean, I can see that, or I could leave the cold of Ohio in December and go someplace else that is warm in December. I yeah. could also do that. But I definitely do want to have some type of time off where I'm not constantly work and just take that quality time off. Do you take days off to do things with your daughter? Uh-huh. <laughs> I feel like I feel like almost every day is I'm doing something for work, especially in the world that we live in with everything being so social. Even me scrolling through social media and commenting on things, I'm still working. And Absolutely. sometimes that's a hard thing to for me to grasp because it's fun. Yeah. Scrolling through social media and stuff, it's so fun. And it takes away the time and it affects you and all of the things. And there's a lot of time where I'm doing these things and I'm like, man, this is fun. Ugh, this isn't work. I have to do something that's hard. Yeah. I need, it's not hard enough. It can't be work. So then I quit doing the fun part of work and then I start doing the hard part of work and then damn it, I'm working again. I'm always working. I feel like I'm always on. So do you think your daughter's witnessing that? Do you think you're like forming a future entrepreneur and business owner with her? I mean. Potentially. I definitely want her to know that she can do and be whatever she wants to be. And whether that's that she wants to go be a vet and help take care of sick animals, cool. If she wants to take pictures like mom, cool. If she wants to be a tattoo artist, cool. Like do whatever you want to do. So I, I do feel like I'm feeding that in her of be who you want to be. I mean, it's one of my big phrases, be happy, be you. That's really all I care about. Be happy with the decisions that you have and the decisions that you've made. And as long as you are happy with that, then who else is to say that you're wrong? Does Lily like to take pictures? Oh yeah, she always. And she's such she's such a photographer's kid. Like she poses, like she knows what to do and when to do it. But she'll also tell you when she doesn't want her picture taken either. Also a blessing and a curse of being a photographer's child. So, and she's a big part of your social media presence too. Oh, like, absolutely. I, I mean, I don't ever just want to be known as a business owner. I don't ever just want to be known as a photographer. I'm a mom first and she's along for the ride. So we are doing this together. It's, I know I didn't coin the phrase, but I use mompreneur a lot because that's what I'm doing. I'm a mom. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm working my business for my family to provide for my family, but I also want others to be able to do the same and I know that I'm not the only person the only woman that's doing that there are so many others that are doing that because their why is their family and I want to shine as much light on that as I possibly can because I could I probably wouldn't be where I am if I didn't have her watching me and, and doing and being a part of all of the things that she is you're out there doing the things. I know that you always say All that. Doing, the All doing the things. Doing the things. Do you think that, even if it wasn't photography, do you think that a woman that wants to have a business can go out and just start one? Or do you think that she needs to plan and, like, with you doing the whole, like, 2020, you didn't get to really plan. You just kind of leaped into it. I definitely... I'm trying to think if I worded that correctly. Like, I'm not a mother, so that's why, I, like, I'm bringing up the... Do you think it was challenging, or do you think it was easier because of how young she was, or because of the way that the world was? Like, is it easier now because she's older? Or, like, what was the time frame of all that? I mean, I think being a business owner is going to be hard regardless of whether you have a family or not. I don't think that it's going to be easy by any stretch of the imagination. It's it's just hard. I personally, it's all I know as being a mom and a business owner, and it's very difficult, but when you bring them into it, it kind of changes. Like, if I was to be like, nope, this is mommy work time, you must be over there, that would be even harder. But the fact that I get to 
bring her into what I'm doing and why I'm doing it and show her what's going on, it, it kind of changes the reason that I'm doing it and makes it a little bit easier because I don't have to necessarily have that separation. Whereas if I was in a corporate job, it's like, nope, you can't be a part of this. I have to focus on this. But being a business owner and being able to have that freedom and to work my schedule as I need to and really decide what's important and work around that. Whereas in corporate world, you're working everything around corporate. It just, I don't know, it's a little different. So something that you and I were talking about earlier, you and I tend to get in a lot of laughing fits. Yes. Which is super fun for me. I think that that is one of the things that's really unique with you is that you have a lot of fun and I think that that is why earlier you said you think that you're you're not working but you are working. Do you think that your business has become your identity, especially with it being like you're in Christine photos, like that's your identity. Do you think that there's a separation between the two or do you think that you are your own business? I would probably say yeah for the most part. I mean, there are some things that like don't necessarily get publicized or you know put on social media but I am who I am I am full of celebrating I'm full of giggles I'm full of fun I'm full of color and tattoos I mean I've got purple hair I think almost every single one of my tattoos is colored like I don't have just like single black and gray I've really just grown to learn that I am a very colorful person inside and out from my language to my hair color to my tattoos to my energy, to all of it. So yeah, I, I do think that it is my identity and I'm okay with that because you get what you get when you when you see me. And when you hear M. Christine photos, I want that to resonate with who I am and not just my business. I think that is a huge thing too because you becoming successful with who you are, you're putting every ounce of yourself into that and you don't have to pretend to be somebody you're not or... Not at all. And it, it makes it that much more prideful for me that I can be authentic to who I am and align with the right type of people that want to work with me, that want to be friends with me, that want to have relationships with me. Make my life and their lives that much happier, that much more to celebrate, that much more fun instead of going along with everybody else's flow and being the, you know, the same as everybody else. Like... We get to be different and that's okay. And I guess that's part of the message that I want to bring with my, my photos too. It's my, one of my big messages is real life and photos. And I'm not the type of person that's gonna pose you and make you sit pretty. I prefer to engage with you and to have prompts and to work off of emotions and not totally focus on the prim and proper things to capture that that photo. And I think that's one of the things that makes your business so much fun and probably why we get into Luffy Fits. Oh, for sure. Because we just say off the wall things. And I think I learned that a lot too. When I worked at Chase, somebody asked me recently, one of my clients, we were talking about uniforms and I was trying to move a bunch of gear around and she's like, oh, you just have so much workouts during your photo shoots. And I was like, yeah. Gosh, I get that all the time. I'm like, if people really understood <laughs> what we do during a photo shoot. For sure. And I think like moving things, like I have a lot of different sets that I move. Going to chiropractor and my back hurting from sitting and editing, moving things. We don't really have the, the ability to dress up or look business professional or things that you that people think business owners are. And, you know, saying cuss words or being vocal about things. I've had a lot of conversations about politics with clients or topics in the news that I feel like a lot of people would think is taboo. Now, of course you have to figure out if that's gonna be the okay thing, mm -hmm. but I think being genuine in your business is so important and knowing when and, and when not to talk about those things, but just being genuine with ourselves. And I was, when this client and I were talking, I was talking about how when I was at Chase, we got to earn the fact that we could wear jeans on Friday. And I'd always get so annoyed by that because I did the same job on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I put in the same effort on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, no matter what I was wearing. And I wanted to be professional and wanted to look professional when I started the business, but I had to like really redefine what professional was. To me now, professionalism is delivering an amazing experience for clients having them laugh, celebrating things with them, 
being grateful for having them, delivering good photos, it doesn't really matter what I wear. And I think with you having the purple hair and having all of the tattoos, it makes you relatable and fun and it does attract the people to you that you're going to get along with and have fun mm -hmm. and you don't really want to work with somebody that thinks that those things aren't professional so it kind of helps you like steer the yeah, boat. Yeah, it kind of like weeds out the people. Lily's dad, he is covered in tattoos and that was one of the first things that he had told me and, and like my mom, like why do you have that tattoo? And he's like, if you don't want to know who I am beyond that tattoo, then you don't deserve to know me. Yeah. And I mean, I feel like that is definitely stuck. I'm like, if you can't get over the fact that I say fuck or that I have purple hair or, you know, that I'm covered in tattoos, then I don't need to know you. We don't need to be friends. I don't need to photograph you. Yeah. And that's okay because guess what? Sally Joe down the road will photograph you. Yeah. Cool. There are plenty of people that can do what I do. Sort of. That, that are photographers. There are yeah. plenty of photographers in the, in the sea. But they aren't like me. We don't have to conform <laughs> to what certain things are and kind of break the rules. You don't have to, at the same time as everybody else is taking, you don't have to dress like everybody's doing, you don't have to do your own thing. You also don't have a studio and you don't rent from the same studios either. You don't. Well, and I, I mean, I think I became a business owner where, yes, I want more time with my family. That has changed since I became full-time. I don't live in the same place. I don't live with the same people. And so where I wanted nights and weekends off before, that has changed. I don't have my daughter every weekend, so a lot of times I'm spending weekdays or weeknights with her to get our quality time in because I don't have her on the weekend, so that's when I get my core work done. And that's not what every business owner wants, but it's what I need in the stage of life that I'm in. And I have the freedom to be able to do that. So it's just really what I what I want as, you know, for myself in my business and you don't have to be the same as everybody else there's so many times where I, and I know I'm not the only one that's comparing everybody else's business oh you do brand photos I do brand photos like are we not charging the same I didn't take that type of picture I don't have any technical training I don't have a diploma in this I'm not as good bullshit I'm different mm -hmm. and I'm allowed to be different and people come to me for a different reason than they would come to you and that is absolutely fine. Yeah. I think there's like this whole thing too that I see it in the mom groups on social media where it's I need a photographer and like 700 people comment and there'll be some people that promote that they're the cheapest and I think there's other people that are like come to me for this service and there's people that'll post in groups that are like I need the cheapest photographer and there's so many different varieties on things and people come from desperation or people come from wanting to offer a service and just seeing the sea of photographers when we're photographers we see the other photographers but People are realtors and they see a sea of realtors and there are people that are bakers and they see a, a sea of bakers. What we each offer is not the same. You and I could both bake a cake and it's going to taste different. It's going to look different. But how we present it and how we make it is in the packaging of how we deliver it all is completely different. And well, and that's what makes it unique to us. Yeah. Like I literally, it's... It's in my my camera bag. I've got confetti balloons everywhere I go, and I want to be known for it. You aren't going to carry around confetti. Yep. There's no damn reason <laughs> for you to. But me, that's that's what's important to me. I want to be able to celebrate with every single person because there is a reason to celebrate. Every single business, every single life has a reason to celebrate. Did you wake up today? Cool. Did you make coffee today? Cool. Did you make a bomb ass sale? Awesome! Yeah. Like, there are all of these reasons to celebrate, so I'm going to keep it in my bag, but you're not. Yeah. And that's okay. That's not part of my business, but if I needed confetti, I would know that you had it. And I love that as I've grown, I started this year with a word of the year. I feel like that's a, a common practice in the entrepreneur world is, what's your word of the year? Yeah. So for me, my word of the year was to celebrate because I was going through a lot of hard stuff. And... I've learned over a lot of hard things is there's always a silver lining. There's always some even sliver of positive that we can pull out of that negative situation that can flip our way of thinking. And learning what that silver lining is, is really, really important to me. Finding the silver lining in all things in life has just been very, very important to me because if you're sitting in all the negativity, you're just gonna breed more negativity. So I wanted to bring more positivity and light to the world. 
to my world and everybody else's. So I'm really trying to celebrate all the things. I'm not trying, dang it, I'm doing it. I'm bringing all of it to everyone and that's been my mission for the year and we are in September now. I've literally had people reach out to me because they know that I'm the one that will celebrate. They think celebrate, they wanna celebrate. I had a client who's now like my, she's in my year long program next year and she's like, I wanna celebrate my 20 year wedding anniversary and I thought of celebrating and I thought of you. And I'm like, yes, my marketing's great, my messaging's great, but like that means that she wanted me because of what I was doing and she knew that I could provide that to her just because that was my word of the year and that's what I was trying to bring to the world, so. Have you always wanted to find the silver lining in things or was there something that shifted in your life? I think I've always tried to find the silver lining because everything isn't all rainbows and sunshine as much as I would prefer it to be. Everything's not and, and that's okay, but we can't sit there. I've always tried to figure out how I can flip that because the more you sit in the negative obviously the longer you're going to be there but if once you find that one flip it can turn you into a whole different person do you think that there is something where you had to dig deep and figure out that there was silver linings to things or did it just come naturally I definitely went through a lot of hard just in my own life in in my own head a lot of the time and when you're in your own head, that's your worst enemy. So when you're celebrating, yes, I can celebrate myself in my own apartment, but when you're celebrating, you're more often than not celebrating with others. And that's really what I wanted to do. I wanted myself to celebrate, but I wanted others to celebrate and to find those reasons to celebrate to really uplift everybody else in addition to myself because community is everything. I can be a millionaire as one, or I can you know, have a whole community of people that are on the same path and thinking the same way and things like that. So I mean, I went through a lot of hard to really figure out how to be happy and what that looked like and not want to go through that anymore. I think there's a thing too that like the more people that I talk to that have businesses, we go through this almost like a transformation. There is no business class in America that someone can teach you the things that happen with the mental state of changing the sacrifices that you make for with your money, with your time, with your friends. And I think that that really tends to draw people that are starting as a full-time business. There is definitely a distinction between doing a business part-time and doing it full-time you're on a raft out in the middle of the ocean. Oh, absolutely. There's storms that come. There's there's hurricanes and <laughs> tidal waves and all of the things. And it's sometimes you're like, how long can I hold on to this? And you're right. Like you have to you have to know that that sunshine's coming. Not all days are going to be great. I know one time you posted a really raw photo of yourself crying. I think in your kitchen. I think it was. Mm -hmm. And it, I think it was really impactful because. You are a person that I was constantly celebrating. You're very colorful. I think one time you had to dress up and you were all black. And I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You cannot wear this. It's weird to see you in black because you're always in color. I went to a conference in January and I wore all black, but and literally had someone come up to me like, are you okay? You're wearing all black. And I was like, yeah, but my hair is fuchsia and I'm wearing rainbow heels. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's fine. I evened it out. But yeah, like it is, it is different for people to see me outside of that I think being raw in that photo too is also you can't have rainbows without a storm you can't have rainbows without a little yeah. without a little rain and that's that's a part a definite important part of my message as well yes hard times happen but we can get to the other side we just have to try we can't sit and stay in negative we have to move forward and my move forward is to find that positive. Guess what? I woke up today and had a cup of coffee and started my damn day. Yesterday, I took a shower, but I remained in bed all day. But guess what? I took a shower. I got up and I did something. But even if it was just that I woke up today, that's okay too. Yeah. Especially in the entrepreneur world that we are in, when we don't get days off, when we don't get people that are like, I'm proud of you today, or anything like that, like, that's okay. People have a hard time like a failure to launch people get stuck and they don't 
do the thing. They just think that they need to, they just have to wait to this and they just have to do that. They just have to do that. And I think that you are a person that you take action on things I've seen in your business where it definitely took me a while to get there though because I am definitely, I've grown a lot. What do you think the contributing factor of that was, do you think? So I listened to... Should I leave that <laughs> into your editing? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to leave that one. I follow a, she's kind of a business coach, kind of not. Her name is Lee, Dr. Lee. And she had said one day, and it just resonated, and I wrote it on my notebook for work, and are you done suffering yet? Dr. Lee Cordell. Cordell. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned that. She is actually mentioned in another podcast that I have I recorded. It. She's amazing. And I'll put her information in the show notes as well. But she she's a trauma-informed coach, and she's just, oh, she's amazing. But she had said it in, I think, just a Facebook Live that she was doing. But it was, it obviously wasn't directed to me, but I definitely received it. And are you done suffering yet? And I, it was suffering, but it was more or less just comfortability. And we, as people, we just get comfortable and we just feel like we can't move. Failure to launch. I was comfortable in my job. I had a paycheck that was steady. I knew that it was coming in. Okay, cool. But I wasn't happy. I wasn't enjoying it. I was suffering. So what could I do with that time that I was spending suffering to better where I was? And it was getting out of that job to be happy. So I I really think that was one of my pivotal moments. And it definitely came right before COVID. And I wrote it down. I was like, gosh, am I done suffering yet? Apparently not today. Apparently not today. But I hit a wall and was like, yes, there's that wall. We're climbing over it. This is how we're going to do it. You have changed your business too. You weren't always offering what you offer now. You pivoted. I not, did. Not to quote our favorite show, <laughs> Pivot. <laughs> For anybody that's never watched Friends, go watch that go episode. Watch you pivoted. And so I think that that is such an important thing, too, for people to realize. Like, your business can change. You can change. It doesn't have to be the way it is. Especially I, as a business owner, you, can, you make the rules. In corporate world, they make the rules. I make my damn rules. Yeah. Like, I can do what I want, what I please with my business because I, I am solely responsible for it. And yeah. that's that's the fun of it. It's also the scariness of it because I could make a change that just, like, bankrupts me. You know? Yeah. Like, that's absolutely possible. But it could also put me in the positive t- trajectory to completely change my life. I've talked about in earlier episodes, I think it was my fear episode that people are afraid to make any type of decision or any type of step because they're afraid that they're going to fail instead of they're not afraid to not move because they're both fears you just have to choose which one and it's scary to change especially being a new mother when you went full-time with your business Lily was just two and a half yeah that's a crazy time chasing a two-year-old around the house and you're trying to build a business Pivoting, learning, growing is such a vital part of having a business, especially in the first 10 years. I was just sitting here thinking about the first time that you and I sat across from each other. I think, were we at Panera? Did you take my one of my mentoring so, classes yeah, at Panera? Yeah, we were at Panera the first, the first meeting, yep. So I think that that's incredibly insane that you and I are now sitting in my studio across from each other talking on a podcast that Mm -hmm. hopefully can inspire other people. And I think that that's what people don't realize is like the stones that you are laying down 10 years ago are going to be the ones that you're walking over 10 years from now. And I don't think people sometimes can see past that when they're starting a business or trying to take a leap. And they get into that fear of, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can do that and not taking that action. I feel like a lot of people, they have the failure to launch because they're afraid that they're going to go off of the plan. I was a planner, man. When I grew up as a kid, I knew when I was going to have a kid. I knew when I was going to be married by. I had it all mapped out. Shit doesn't go as planned. Yeah. More often than not, throwing a kid in the mix too, <laughs> we're done. Like things don't go as planned. Yeah. Nobody could plan for any of that. And that's okay. I think what being an entrepreneur has really helped me with even growing and evolving myself in the last eight years is 
to go more with the flow because you can't plan for everything. You can sure as shit try, but you can't plan for everything and you have to be adaptable in figuring out what the hell the next pivot's gonna be to stay afloat. Yeah. Because it's shit or get off the pot. I mean, you either are gonna do it or you're not. It's one of those things where you knew you wanted to be a photographer Always and have. yes, I think like I knew I wanted to be a photographer and our visions are completely different. And I think as businesses, we can look at somebody and look at, look up to them and go like, that's how I want my business. Like you and I talk quite frequently. We have to Snapchat every day to keep our Snapchat <laughs> to keep our streak alive. I'm so mad at the day we missed somehow. I don't know how I did that, but we will get back up to it's our okay, streaks again. We're almost a hundred days in. We're good. To reset again. We had almost were a hundred before. That's such a huge thing that I think a lot of times people start a business and they don't want help or they don't ask for things. They don't talk to people about the struggles that they're going through. They don't see the raw emotions of everything. I think that it's vital to have somebody that is in your corner, that's rooting for you, that's cheering for you so that if you are having a day of storms that they can be a light and be supportive and check in on you. It's just because we business doesn't need to be serious all the time. It doesn't. And that's part of why I wanted to celebrate all year because everyone just, it's business. You got to put your head down and you got to do the things. But if you're not celebrating what you've accomplished, then why the hell are you doing it? Right. What's the point? I, I don't want to just sit and work all day long. I want to celebrate what I what I did. Did I make a sale? Cool. Did I make us lunch today? Sweet. So what do you think celebrating to you? I have a goal that I want to accomplish, and I have a bottle of champagne in my studio that when I hit it, I can't wait to pop it open and celebrate. And I'm not even a drinker. I probably won't even drink it. It's just the thought of watching popping it, it open. Popping yes. open. Yes. I don't know why. It's just one of those things. What is your definition of celebrating like do you bake cakes or so funny you asked me that because I had someone ask me that the other day I was like what's your celebratory treat and I'm like you know I don't know because I don't like cake right I'm not a big ice cream person I mean I don't I don't really know I really think it's just acknowledging I feel like acknowledging what you've accomplished is the celebration it doesn't have to be confetti do I want it to be over the top sometimes absolutely because I do think that some things do allow for that but I think it's really comes down to just acknowledging the things that you've done because especially as an entrepreneur we do so much in a day how many to-do lists do you have how many things have you crossed off yeah we don't acknowledge the things that we've accomplished to really understand how we got to where we are and so the more that you celebrate those accomplishments, it's kind of adding milestones along your way to furthermore celebrate. I celebrated my birthday today. I celebrated, you know, making 14K on this sale or whatever it is. It's just an accomplishment because we don't celebrate them enough. That's part of the reason I created my happy box. And what's your happy box? Actually, so, hold on. Uh, before we get to your happy box, I want to touch on something that you said that I think is important too. And then we're going to note the happy <laughs> box story. But I know that when I had business goals, I said I had that I wanted a Michael Kors watch or a Michael Kors purse. And when I hit a certain goal, I was going to get those things. But by the time I hit the goal, I had ended up getting like a smartwatch that could help me track my steps and all that. And I was like, I don't want a Michael Kors watch because I love my smartwatch now, but I want this Michael Kors bag. And when I hit this goal, I'm going to get this, I'm going to get this bag. Well, then I hit that goal and I pushed the goal post out and then I hit that goal and pushed the goal post out. And then finally I was like, I passed this goal six times and I never got this bag. And so one day I, I hit the goal again. I'm like, you hit this goal six times, go buy the damn bag. And there was like so much joy in it. And I know that recently, one of the things that I feel like you're really good at is celebrating the small things. You bought a headboard for your bed. I bought a bed. <laughs> I have never, ever, like not even just in my adult life, I've never had an actual bed frame. I've had the metal frames that keep the bed off the floor. Sweet. But I wanted a headboard. I work a lot in bed. I work anywhere I can in my house. That's cool. There's just something about a headboard that just makes a room look so put together. And I feel like it it up-leveled me into adulthood. As like, crazy <laughs> as that sounds. Yeah, I bought a bed. I had hit numerous goals. It had been on my bougie wish list. It's a bed. I get it. It's a bed. Lily's dad had offered to buy us a bed for years, for years. 
And I'm like, no, that 250 can go somewhere else. That can go somewhere else. We don't need it. We have something. I made a decision. I accomplished a goal and I recognized it. And then I made a decision for what I wanted and I did it. So all of those things along the way for me were celebrations. I made a decision. I accomplished a goal. I bought a bed. I put the damn thing together. Not by myself, (laughs) but with assistance. I celebrated the original award that I told myself that I was going to, and then some along the way. And I think it's important to acknowledge too that you, even though that your brand is about celebrating, not that you doubted yourself, (laughs) but you also had to stop and go, I have to do this because I earned it. It's not just something that comes easy. You have to remind yourself. And I think that you do that a lot with your happy box. Mm -hmm. So we want to talk, talk about that because I think it's something that's really cool. I was talking to my therapist and it, it just kind of came up that I do a lot of things. And she's like, you, you run two businesses. You take care of your daughter. You do all these things. When is the last time that you acknowledged that? You do a lot. I'm like, yeah, I know, but you know, it's, it's just kind of what I have to do. And she's like, well, maybe you should keep track of the things that you're doing. So I got the idea to create a box. It was just a simple shadow box and I was gonna label it abundance of accomplishments because I wanted to keep track of accomplishments. No matter how big, no matter how small, you know, whatever made me excited or happy for the day, I was going to add a little piece of paper into it. So I put it on the wall. I started adding notes to it and my daughter came up and she said, well, what is that? I said, huh, how do I explain abundance of accomplishments to a four-year-old? And so I said, well, it's a box of accomplishments that made me happy today. She said, oh, so a happy box? I said, you know what? Yeah. It is a happy box. It's a box full of things that made me happy today. And now she has one too. And we add to it, not as nightly as I would like, but periodically throughout the week. And I date them all. So that way I can open them up later and see what those accomplishments were and then celebrate them later. In December when you're taking the month In December when I have that whole month. Look at the accomplishments for the years. I think that's great too. And I think that you should also acknowledge the fact of what the paper looks like. Oh, okay. So <laughs> it's a, first of all, that shadow box things. is, it's a shadow box with a clear glass front. And my beautiful friend, Jocelyn, I created the, the design for the happy box and she printed it out so nicely for me. So it says happy box across the front and you can see into it. And being the colorful person that I am, all of the pieces of paper are different colors. I'm literally seeing my accomplishments in rainbow just like I love. And it makes me even that much more happy because I'm seeing this box fill up with all of these things that make me happy in all of the colors that make me happy. And it just, it's overflowing at this point. And you get to lay in your bed and look at your happy box. I do, <laughs> I do. It's right across from me. Okay, something that you see visually, even while I'm a, you're... I'm a visual person, so it definitely... You can say it all you want. You can write it down and put it in a journal. Great. But for me to actually see the box filling up made me realize really what I do day to day, week to week, month to month, over year. That box is going to be overfilled with accomplishments, with things that made me happy, and I can actually see it happening before my eyes. You created a lot of silver linings and added a lot of color to those silver linings (laughs) and brought a lot of color into your world into your daughter's life what do you think is one of the biggest accomplishments that you have in your life oh my gosh I mean her (laughs) I wish that everybody could see the face that you just made (laughs) opposed to the face that I made earlier that had me pause this podcast because (laughs) we were laughing in tears Lily is definitely my biggest accomplishment and just being a mom in general but showing her what you can do and allowing her the freedom to experience all of those types of things and yes I'm molding her into a person but she's also molding herself and it's helped me in my business in my own life to really accomplish my dreams by allowing her to accomplish her own if you had somebody sitting in front of you that was wanting to start a business or a photography business and they were doubting themselves what is something that you would tell them 
just do it? What is something that you think it is the storms that come through? Or is it, do you find it in the rainbows? Do you find it through the triumphs and the struggles? Or So, I mean, I think working in general isn't, you know, super fun. But if you're passionate about what you're doing, that makes it that much easier to do it. So find something that you're passionate about that you really, really enjoy that could be beneficial for you and for other people and you kind of got it. Like make yourself happy and you can make other people happy with it as well. I think it's really finding your true passions and running with it to the best that you can because you're not going to let your passions down. You're not going to stop something that you're passionate about. You're going to try your damnedest to make it work. And so figuring out what those passions are would definitely and go with it. We've covered a lot of topics today from going part-time to your, through your business, finding joy, celebrating. Do you think in the years to come that that's going to change in your business? Do you think next year you're going to have a new word and it's going to be a new theme? I think I'll keep adding. It? I think I'll keep adding to it because I don't think that we celebrate enough. So I always want that to be a mission for me. I don't, it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing at all. Yeah. And I think that we need to put more good into the world and celebrating can do that. Whether it's just for you or for your audience or for your family or whatever it may be. I think it's gonna, it's here to stay for sure. It's awesome that you get to shine your light and be the light uh, for others to go after that too. I definitely am thankful that you're here today and I am sure you'll be on a future podcast. We'll put in the show notes all your information to find you. Is there any particular place that you prefer everybody go to to find you? So, obviously, my website is mchristinephotos.com, but I am all over social media. Facebook, I'm mchristine, Thomas, Instagram. I have both my business and personal. It's all, it'll be linked. It's all there. All there. Well, thank you so much for being here today and go find something to celebrate for today. Well, that's all we have for today's podcast. We thank you so much for joining and I hope that you have a fantastic day and we will catch you next time with the Joss and Crowd podcast.